This program is sponsored by Medical Arts Hearing Instruments, 52 West Street in Lemonster, locally and authentically providing better hearing and quality of life since 1978. www.donotshout.com Technically, originally scheduled for 6:30 p.m. Um, John, you want to read the hearing notice anyway? Uh, sure. This is petition 37-20, the botanist grants a special permit to operate a medical marijuana facility located at 1775 Lock Drive. Okay, so what happened with this is we set this public hearing for this evening at 6.30 using our conventional means for an in-person uh, public hearing at 6.30 uh, because we weren't going to have an in-person public hearing, the notice would not have sufficed and I canceled the hearing. Um, John, uh, it's okay with you later on in the agenda when this comes up under uh, our um, meeting, uh, we'll set a new hearing date using the teleconference protocols. Okay, that's fine. All right. So um, that being said, um, when we reach 653, we can move on to the second public hearing that we have scheduled this evening, 55-20. Uh, yeah. just one minute away. Everybody healthy? So far, so yep. good. So far, so good is right. Yep. Same here. I just uh, texted Frank to see if um, where he was. Okay, it is 6:53. John, if you want to begin the 6:53 public hearing. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. 
Uh, this is petition 55-20. This is a public hearing before the Lemister City Council. Officer Julio Ramos requests to amend chapter 13 of the revised ordinances entitled Motor Vehicles and Traffic. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Lemister as follows. Chapter 13, section 13-34 of the revised ordinances entitled no parking on certain streets is hereby amended by inserting the following text. No parking on Research Drive, both sides, from a point beginning 1,163 feet easterly from the intersection with Central Street through the cul-de-sac and back westerly to the 1,163 feet starting point. Um, as a point of order, I. I I do believe uh, we need to amend uh, a minor amendment to this. Um, instead of through the cul-de-sac, uh, I think we, I think the word through should be um, deleted uh, and the word around inserted in its place. And I think then the language makes more sense. Um, I'd ask you to uh, pull my committee, Mr. President, to see if they agree with that amendment. Okay. Uh, Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Yes, I agree with that. And Council David Cormier? I also agree. All right. So, uh, so first uh, order of business, I'll make a motion, Mr. President, to amend um, the petition maybe, to replace... Uh, I'm sorry, right, before we Before we discuss, before you make that motion and we discuss it, should we check with any members of the public? Is any member of the public that wishes to speak on it? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind doing that. That's fine. Um, I'll, I'll go to see if there are any members of the public who have telephoned in. Uh, does any member of the public wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 55-20? Second time. Are there any members of the public uh, who are on this conference call who wish to address the city council either in favor of or against petition 55-20? Uh, if you could speak now. Third and final time, are there any members of the public who wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 55-20 who are on this telephone conference call? Um, seeing none, uh, Mr. President, at this time, I think it's probably appropriate to make a motion to amend Petition 55-20 to replace the word through with the word around. And I'd ask for a second on that motion. Okay, that's appropriate. All right, so you heard the motion that's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Councilor Frieda? Yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. I'll check if Councilor Arringer is here yet. Councilor Arringer? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. And I will shall be recorded as yay. The uh, petition or the uh, notice is amended. Um, and I guess we'll, uh, I'll let you finish your public hearing, Councilor. Okay, thank you. Um, the, uh, the police chief uh, sent a recommendation in favor of this. The, um, uh, the traffic agent also sent a letter in favor of this petition. Uh, if you recall at the initial, one of the earlier hearings, the developer had come down and had talked about the safety hazards involved. Um, so they had, they, they, there is now a need to, to increase the size of the parking restriction. So my recommendation, um, Mr. President, is to grant 55-20 as amended, and I would ask you to poll my committee. Do we uh, want to do that uh, when it's on the, when we're on the regular calendar? 
but we just want to you feel comfortable. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. I'm 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 way ahead of myself. I apologize. That's okay. Um, we're good. We're good with that. I, <laughs> yeah, just just for the legal affairs, um, I'd ask uh, if you could just ask legal affairs where they stand with this. All right. So I'm going to ask uh, for a recommendation from legal affairs on the amended petition. Council Shalfo Zephyr. Yes, I support it. And Councilor David Cormier. I support it, and I suggest that we close the hearing. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the last part of what you said, Councilor Cormier. I support the petition, uh, and I we close the public hearing. Still, still didn't pick me up at the very end of that. I suggest that we close the public hearing. Okay, fine. Sorry about that. Well, I'm not getting them clearly either. I don't know the uh, Council David Cormier suggested that the public hearing now be closed. Is that uh, Chairman okay with that? I, I'm okay with that. I just I'm okay with that. I would just ask that you, um, you know, if there are any counselors that want to weigh in on the public hearing at this time, just to, to be given an opportunity. <laughs> So I don't know if there are any counselors that, before we close the public hearing, if they have anything they want to add or any questions. Okay, we hear if none. Not, uh, I request that the public hearing be closed. So, so be it. All right, uh, we are at seven o'clock. So I would ask you to start the regular meeting. We'll, we'll recess in a minute to um, for the public forum. Please rise. I pledge allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America. America. And to the Republic for which it stands. One nation. One nation. Under God. Indivisible. With liberty. And justice. justice. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'll now take a roll call of the Councilors in attendance. Councilor Frieda? Present. Councilor Dombrowski? Present. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Present. Councilor Feckley? Present. Councilor Angelini? Present. Councilor Ardinger? Present. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Present. Councilor David Cormier? Present. That will be recorded as present. All nine members of the council are present and accounted for. Uh, does the uh, chairman, chairwoman of records have a report? I do, Mr. President. I have the minutes of the um, regular city council meeting of April 13, 2020, and I find them to be in order. However, Council Frieda contacted me late this afternoon. She has any comments or concerns or corrections, but I'm not sure what they are. I don't know if she wants to bring them up now or if we should uh, put off approving them until the next meeting. Um, well. I would probably prefer that we put off uh, that she could deal directly with you on that, and we put them off. Okay. We put off approving these till the next meeting. Okay, then that would be my suggestion that we wait until the next meeting to approve the records, and I will have discussion with Council Frieda. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Anybody have any objection? Uh, just, just for the record, I didn't, I didn't get my packet till about four o'clock today. I'm not sure so, why, but right. I haven't well, had a chance to really well, look at it either. All right, that's fine. Okay, so you'll contact uh, Council of Feckley, Council of Frieda, and you'll uh, indicate what your uh, edits, suggested edits are, okay? Will do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, um, I'll entertain a motion in the recess. So no moved. Uh, second. Council of Arringer, moved. Do I have a second? Second. And Council of David Cormier. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, Council by roll call, Council of Frieda? Yay. Council Dombrowski? Yay. Council Shalfo Zephyr? Yay. Council Feckley? Yay. Council Angelini? Yay. Council Ardinger? Yay. Council Pauline Cormier? Yay. Council David Cormier? Yay. And I shall be recorded as yay. The uh, motion to recess carries 9 to 0. We are in recess. I will read the public forum notice. 
The public forum is an opportunity for any member of the audience to speak on a matter specifically listed on the council agenda. Speakers will be listed. To, speakers will be asked to come to the microphone and state their formal name and address, along with identifying the specific item or items they wish to address. Each speaker is respectfully asked to keep their comments within a two-minute time frame. The council will not be responding or answering any questions. However, at the discretion of the council president, clarification may be given. We have, if someone would like to address the city council, the public forum, please state your name and your residential address. I'll ask a second time, is any member of the public that wishes to address the council in the public forum? And a third and final time, is there any member of the public which, who wishes to address the council in the public forum? Public forum is closed. We are back in session, starting off with communications from the mayor, specifically appointments. A measure confirming the mayor's appointment of William Connor to perform the duties of interim chief assessor on a temporary basis for 60 days until the office can be filled by a permanent appointment. The appointment uh, of Mr. Connor is referred to Ways and Means. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is first time on the calendar, uh, so regular course, and uh, we will ask Mr. Connor um, to uh, come to our next meeting for an interview, whether it be virtual or otherwise, and I'll ask the city clerk to um, facilitate that. Okay. Thank you very much. The appointment of Mr. Connor is giving regular course and scheduled for an interview at our next meeting. And your next appointment? Uh, Joan? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Clerk. <laughs> A measure confirming the mayor's reappointment of Susan Shalafo Zephyr to the Library Board of Trustees, term to expire 4 15, 2023. The reappointment of Susan Shalafo Zephyr is referred to the Chairwoman of Ways and Needs. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, since uh, Ms. Shalafo Zephyr is uh, a uh, city councilor, she will be present at the next meeting so we can have an uh, informal interview with her if the councilors want to ask her some questions considering the fact that this is a reappointment. Very well. The appointment of Susan Shalafo Zephyr is given regular course uh, to our next meeting. Um, 5920. 59-20. National Grid and Verizon New England, Inc. request permission to locate poles, wires, and fixtures, including the necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures along and across the following public way, Water Street. National Grid to install one J.O. pole on Water Street, beginning at a point approximately 90 feet southwest of the center line of the intersection of Prescott Street, and continuing approximately 17 feet in a southeast direction. Install one pole, number 5-84, across Water Street, between poles number 4 and number 5, as a stub pole, with an anchor to support pole number 5 when it feeds three-phase primary down Prescott Street for new service. Uh, petition 59-20 is referred to the Chairwoman of Public Service. Yes, Mr. President, regular course, and I believe we have to establish a hearing for 5-11-2020 at 6.53 p.m. Okay, you heard the recommendation to establish a hearing, public hearing on May 11th at 6.53 p.m. Um, is there... Any discussion? This will be by roll call. Councilor Frieda? Yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Ardinger? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor David Cormier? Mr. President, if I may, let the record reflect that I'm abstaining. The um, equipment is partially owned. Thank you. Great. Very well. Your abstention is noted. I shall be recorded as yay by a vote of 8 to 0, a hearing date of May 11th at 6.53 p.m. is established. 59-20 uh, is given regular course. 60-20. All right, 60-20. 
Sterling Jewelers, Inc. Renew the second-hand dealer's license for K Jewelers, number 1285, located at 100 Commercial Road. 60-20 is referred to the Chairwoman of Ways and Means. Thank you, Mr. President. First time on the agenda, regular course, and uh, if they haven't done so already, I'd ask the city clerk's office to get reports from the treasurer's office and the police department. Very well. Uh, 60-20 is given regular course. We'll move on to 61-20. 61-20, Albert D. Mason of Mason Investments, Inc. Renew Bowling Alley License for Mason Recreation Center located at 640 North Main Street. 61-20 is referred to the Chairwoman of Ways and Means. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, regular course and reports from the Treasurer and Collector and the Police Department. Thank you. 61-20 is given regular course. Matters before the City Council, starting off with the financial report. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Started off the fiscal year on July 1, 2019, with $19,290,125. To date, the mm -hmm. interest is $2,200. Uh, uh, $205,624.39. Um, all of the uh, point, financial point of, creation. Point of order. I don't know if anybody else is having trouble. I can't really hear um, the counselor. I don't do, know if do you have a, else is having a Counselor, do you have a copy of the uh, financial report? Yes, I do. But I just he's want to make the Yeah, he's, he's reciting... Um, you might want to use that and go along with that. He's indicated that we started the fiscal year with $19,890,780. We've added interest right. of $205,624. And the total appropriations through this evening, if uh, C60 is passed, would be $5,143,436, leaving a balance of $14,952. $968. Could everybody hear that okay? Yes, Mr. President. Yeah. Is that yeah. Are you hearing me? I, maybe I should call in on my lamp. Yeah, maybe. That would be helpful, Dave. The reason guys I it was because I didn't know if everybody else was having the same issue. All right. He's, let's give him a second to join us on his landline. While we wait for David to swap over, I believe um, John Richard, the Comptroller, and Steve Montreal, the Mayor, joined us. Can you each just speak real quick so I can mark you? Yes, uh, John Richard is here. Thank you. Dean Masarell is here. Thank you, guys. Did you fall back? down the stairs or something? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> phones was, I guess, I, we read the financial report for the public, um, and I guess you can inquire as to whether there are any questions on the financial report. Okay. Are there any, are there any questions or concerns on the financial report? Nope. Okay. I think Hearing we're all good. Um, we'll uh, go to C60 on the finance. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, C-60, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, relative to the appropriation of $600,000 be made to the pension expense account, same to be transferred from the stabilization fund. Um, as most people uh, know that have been around for a while, this is not a customary uh, appropriation that we normally see. Um, this is basically, and, and I know the comptroller is here and can you know explain it if need be, but I will do my best to summarize. Uh, basically, this is uh, as a result of COVID-19. A lot of people uh, 
I'm sure can can uh, guess that our investments are down on our pension fund. So what we are doing is we are appropriating uh, this money um, instead of touching the investments in the uh, in the account. We are appropriating this money, and also likewise C61. They are both related. It's just that there are two different sums of money that are coming out of two different places. And by appropriating uh, this money from these accounts uh, and not um, touching the investments, um, the comptroller indicated to me that it probably will save the city over 120000 or so dollars um, by not sort of selling our investments while investments are, are low right now. So uh, that is basically the gist of what we are trying to do here. And if anybody has any questions, I'm sure the comptroller can, you know, can weigh in. Um, and I can check with members of my committee as well to see if they have any questions uh, as well, Mr. President, if you uphold them. Okay, so your position is to grant C-60, uh, Mr. Chairman? That is correct. All right, so let me check with the committee. I'm sorry. Uh, Councilor Pauline Cormier? I'm in agreement. Councilor Angelini? Uh, yes, Mr. President. I'd like to. Do, I'm in agreement, but I just like to say this is this is nothing out of the ordinary. Um, large, some of the largest pension fund managers in the country, including Calpers, the California uh, Teachers Pension Fund, often rebalances their stock and bond portfolio to meet certain targets. And if the market conditions aren't fav favorable for either stock and bond rebalancing, they postpone. The climate is more favorable. I, this is a, uh, a routine and a, uh, a prudent uh, request, and I'm certainly in favor of it. Very well. Um, so the, the, what's happening here, I guess, in essence, is that we're um, avoiding some investment risk. Um, and I think the comptroller has suggested to me previously that we cannot borrow from our own pension fund. And that's why this money is coming from the sources that it's being proposed to come from. All right. So you've heard you've heard the unanimous recommendation of the Finance Committee to grant C-60. Are there any, any discussion? Yes, Mr. President, I have a, a question. Councilor Frieda. Yes. Are we able to ask the controller and the mayor, or do we have to go into recess? We would have to recess. We, we will, I'm sure we'd be happy to do that if you have some questions. I'll make a motion that we do so. All right. Does anyone, anyone want to second it? Yeah. Is that Councilor no. David Cornea seconding? Yes. All right. So we have a motion to recess seconded by Councilor Cormier, David Cormier. Councilor Frieda? All right. Thank you, Mr. President. We have, we, um, we have to vote on it, unfortunately. I can't take a uh, – I have to do a roll call. Uh, I'm sorry. That's right. Um, yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Shalafo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor um, Feckley? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Arringer? Councilor Arringer? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. And I will be recorded as yay. We are in recess. Councilor Frieda, you can ask your question. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Hi, John. Hi, Mayor. Um, thank you for coming down and answering some questions. Um, I know that this is a normal uh, transfer, but um, I guess I'm just concerned about it coming out of the stabilization. I know we've done it in past years, um, but we weren't approaching the situation that we're going to be approaching. Um, and I guess, you know, you know, John, I always talk about the free cash. But, I mean, the stabilization, going back when the mayor and I started together, there was not a real um, support for a stabilization account. But finally, we were able to get it through. But it was... The fact that it had a two-thirds vote is what kind of saved it back down so we could be able to put it through. But, um, and, and I guess, John, uh, taking it out of the um, 
if we can and we get it. But wouldn't can't we wait till then? Um, I guess you know we're at a schedule. I think this is scheduled for 2040 to to be paid, and we're we're already tracked at 2024. Um, I mean, should shouldn't we be able to? Uh, wait till free cash comes in because we can go beyond June 30th now. Okay. Uh, are you finished with your question? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, uh, Counselor, now this is really not a normal appropriation. We've really never done this before. Um, it is really all it is is allowing, instead of withdrawing funds, uh, every month, of course, we meet pension payroll. And in order mm -hmm. to do that, what we have to do is withdraw from our investments, we'll say, $1 million to meet okay. the April payroll. And as you probably are aware, the market is quite volatile. And, mm -hmm. in fact, I think I gave a copy with the financial report that the uh, PRIT fund, which the city is fully invested in, was down 9.89% through March 31st. So on that day, the city would have had to withdraw $1 million to meet payroll for the end of April. So that would have cost the city approximately, uh, we would have recognized losses at that point for $110,000. If we were able to borrow um, for 60 days uh, on the market, the retirement system, at 1.75%, which probably would be the rate, for 60 days, it would only cost us $3,000. But the statutes do not allow for retirement systems to borrow. The only thing that uh, will happen here is the city will probably um, not uh, obtain approximately half of $3,000 in lost investment income. So it will probably, for 60 days, be about $1,500. And why I'm saying is uh, the city is scheduled to give, uh, the, and you have another uh, payment schedule before you, we gave you, that the city will be giving the retirement system $9 million in July. So uh, the retirement system and the city will fully be repaid to the stabilization fund uh, at that time. So this is just a temporary measure. Uh, it just shows the strength of the city. And, it'll, you know, as Councilor Cormier had mentioned, it will be saving a lot of money. So there is... Muted. Unmuted. And Councilor, excuse me? I said, is that mostly the school department? The pension payroll? Yes. What do you mean mostly the school department? The school department is approximately 30% of the um, pension payroll. But that really has nothing to do with what's before you. Are there any other questions from the Mr. Okay, so the so the stabilization fund will be fully repaid, plus uh, the interest that will be foregone in you know and in not investing it for for the two months or however long it will be invested for. It would have been invested for. So, so the, in essence, John, that that the stabilization fund will be whole. The city has the it will be made. It will be made whole. And the, and the yep. city has the flexibility of uh, getting its best buck uh, on its investments regarding its pension obligations. Yes, because we did not withdraw at a low. And actually, 9.89% loss wasn't all that bad. If you were, as people would know, if you were all in stock, 
it was probably a 23% loss through the end of March. But because they're diversified, they uh, lost 9.89%, which still is a lot of money on a million dollars. Sure is. Are there any other questions for uh, the Comptroller? Uh, this is Councilor Shalas. Is that I actually have a question? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, for, um, this is for the Comptroller. So, John, given the volatility, though, I mean, this could we see this happening again? Would we have to dip back into stabilization? Yes. Um, yeah. We'll we'll take a. a yes. Well, we we will look at that at the end of April. For, uh, you know, okay. and see where we're at and see if it makes sense to do it. But, of course, it will only be for 30 days because we're talking a new budget comes into effect right. July 1st. Yep. Yes, and even at the end of June for one day or two days or whatever the last payroll period. So we will examine whether it makes sense to do that at that time. Yes, you're correct, Counselor. But as you as you've seen so far, the market has rebounded a little bit since a March thirty first. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the plan is to make stabilization whole again. That was my other question. Yes. They, yep. It, stabilization will be made whole. This is not a permanent appropriation. Yep. Hey, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? All right. I just, have, I just have a I just have a follow up to the stabilization. Um, last year we put five million dollars back into stabilization when we got free cash, and we've already taken five million out now, so we're pretty much level, I think. Um, so do, do we have free cash on its way, John? That is to be determined. When it is determined, the city council and everybody will know. So, it, and that has nothing to do with um, this year's free cash. And we had, subsequent to the 5.1 million that we uh, put back, we had subsequent appropriations last year. And if you remember, we closed the year last year with 978,000 in free cash. That would that was transferred will be carried forward to this year. Okay. Um, anything else? Okay, we are back in session, um, and we have a unanimous recommendation on the floor regarding C60. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, this will be by roll call. Councilor Frieda. May. Councillor Dombrowski? Yay. Councillor Shalfo Zephyr? Yay. Councillor um, Feckley? Councillor Feckley? Yay. Councillor Angelini? Yay. Councillor Ardinger? Yay. Councillor Pauline Cormier. Yay. Councillor David Cormier. Yay. And I shall be recorded as yay. C60 passes by a vote, uh, is granted by a vote of 9 to 0. Does the chairman have an order? Yes, Mr. Okay, Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President, I was a nay. Oh, you were. I'm sorry, Councillor yeah. Frieda. No problem. Let, uh, let, let that be amended or let that be fixed. Uh, that was. Uh, granted by a vote of eight to one, Councilor Frieda in the minority. All right, uh, does the chairman have an order? Yes, Mr. President, order that the sum of $600,000 be made to the expense account, be transferred from the stabilization fund, move for the adoption of the order. You've heard the request for the adoption of the order. Um, this was, is usually a voice vote, but because of the nature of our hearing, it will be by roll call again. Councilor, uh, Councilor Frieda? Nay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. 
Councillor Oranger. Yay. Councillor Pauline Cormier. Yay. Councillor David Cormier. Yay. And I shall be recorded as yay. The order is passed by a vote of adopted. I'm sorry, by a vote of eight to one. <laughs> Moving on to C61. Thank you, Mr. President. C-61, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, relative to the appropriation of $400,000 to be made to the pension expense account, the same amount to be transferred from the principal debt service expense account. Um, once again, Mr. President, uh, just for the record, the same explanation as the previous appropriation. Um, this is not a um, customary appropriation, but given the circumstances of of the economic downturn in, in with COVID-19, uh, the city is requesting, the mayor is requesting that we make these transactions, uh, and it will in turn uh, save the money, uh, save the taxpayers a hundred and something, a hundred and somewhat thousand dollars um, by not dipping into the funds um, which are, are are low right now, the investments that are low right now. Um, it's the same nature as C60, just that the funds are coming from a different uh, place. So it is my um, recommendation that we uh, grant C-61, and I ask that you hold my committee. Very well. Uh, Councilor Pauline Cormier? Agreed. And Councilor Angelini? Uh, yes, I'm in favor of it as well, Mr. President. Very well. You've heard the MS recommendation of finance to grant C-61. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, this will be by roll call. Councillor Frieda? Yay. Councillor um, Dombrowski? Yay. Councillor Shalafo Zephyr? Yay. Councillor Feckley? Yay. Councillor Angelini? Yay. Councilor uh, Oranger? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. And I shall be recorded as yay by a vote of 9 to 0. C61 is granted. Does the chairman have an order? Yes, yes Mr. President. Ordered that the sum of $400,000 be made to the pension expense account the same amount transferred from the principal debt service expense account move for the adoption of the order you have heard the request for the adoption of the order uh, this will be by roll call councillor Frieda yay councillor Dombrowski yay councillor Shalafo Zephyr yay councillor Feckley yay councillor Angelini yay councillor Ottinger yay councillor Pauline Cormier Yay. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. And I shall be recorded as yay by a vote of 9-0. to zero. The order has been adopted. Moving on to C-62. C-62, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, relative to the appropriation of $385,000, the school department transportation expense account, the same amount to be transferred from the stabilization fund, uh, Mr. President, on, uh, I believe it was Friday, April 24th, we did get a letter from the mayor, and he is uh, requesting that we give C-62 leave to withdraw without prejudice. And so that will be my recommendation, is that we give it leave to withdraw without prejudice, and I will ask that you pull members of my committee. Very well. Uh, Councilor Pauline Cormier? I agree. Councilor Angelini? I, I'm in agreement as well, Mr. President. You've heard the MS recommendation of the Finance Committee to give C-62 leave to withdraw without prejudice. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Mr. President, I have a question. Yes. To the, to the Finance Chair, um, do we know why this is being withdrawn? Um, from what I've been uh, told, the reason for the withdrawal is uh, regarding um, the, the busing contracts. Um, it has been advised by uh, KP Law, uh, based on the language of our uh, busing contract, that there are certain obligations they feel that we, um, you know, don't owe any more money for busing right now. So um, we are not, when, to the best of my knowledge, 
the school department is not paying any more funds as of right now for busing. Okay, I only ask because some communities are, uh, while they're disputing the contract, are paying partial payments just to be sure that, you know, they're covered a little bit. So, but if that's, yeah. if that's coming from KPUR, obviously it's a recommendation. Councilor Frieder, I can add that I've had a discussion with the comptroller. The uh, language we have in our particular contract um, is very favorable to the city, and the uh, law firm feels like they are on a solid footing regarding uh, our not having an obligation under these circumstances where we're not using all the bus runs. So uh, um, the uh, mayor's office believes this is prudent at this juncture, and that's why we got the uh, letter asking for leave to withdraw. Right, I, I do under I do understand that. I just I think the um, from what I've heard from others, the Department of Education is recommending partial payments be made. That was the only reason, and that's what I thought this was. So we're, not, we're, not the, we're not we're not we're not in the same financial position that other cities and towns are. We're in good position, and if uh, it turned out that there was a, um, a a ruling that we had to pay this, we would be able to afford to pay it. It's prudent at this point to to withdraw this, and, and uh, unless there's any other questions. All right. So you've heard the MS recommendation once again of finance to give C62 leave to withdraw, starting with Councilor Frida. Yay. I'm sorry. Yay. Yay. Councilor Dombrowski. Yep. Yay. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr. Yay. Councilor Feckley. Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Artinger? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. That shall be recorded as yay. C62 is given leave to withdraw without prejudice by a 9 to 0 vote. Moving on to legal affairs, starting with 37 20. Thank you, Mr. President. Petition 37-20, the botanist grants a special permit to operate a medical marijuana facility located at 1775 Lock Drive. Um, we need to schedule a public hearing on this matter for May 25th so we can get the advertising done properly. I think that's uh, the 26th. Right? For, uh, uh, oh, is that, the is holiday. that a holiday? Okay. Yeah. May 26th, and uh, I'd let, ask the clerk for a proposed hearing time. Um, due to the nature of the special permit, I would recommend uh, 6.30, so at least 25 minutes is available for the petitioner. Do, do we have anything else scheduled for public hearing that night, uh, Madam Clerk? No. Okay. That sounds, that sounds reasonable. Okay. Uh, so we just need to vote on that. I... I would further say that um, I have been in contact with the um, attorneys representing the petitioner. They're, they're aware of the situation and they're aware of the um, uh, anticipated new hearing date. Uh, so I entertain a motion to establish the hearing date for May 26th at 6.30, and my recommendation under the circumstances is further time. Very well. I'll check with your committee members. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? I agree with that. And Councilor David Cormier? I also agree. You've heard the MS recommendation of the Legal Affairs Committee to give 37-20 further time and to establish a public hearing on May 26th at 6.30 p.m. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Secretary, I have a question. I have a yes, question. Um, is if 526 shows that we're still audio, um, do we will you be looking to maybe push that off? No, um, so I would unless unless the petitioner um, has a good reason to uh, delay it on their side of it. I think we owe them um, the most uh, speedy public hearing we can give them under the circumstances they've been put off for a while um, so uh, if they're uh, good with going forward on the 26th you can expect that we will be having uh, a public hearing versus via telephone conference 
I just think that it's important to have it face to face on this one. I understand your uh, position, but um, I'm balancing the uh, rights of the petitioner uh, with the interest of the public. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, by roll call, Councilor Frieda? Yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Yay. Councilor uh, Angelini? Uh, Mr. President, I recuse myself from this matter uh, That's of a conflict. Correct. I'm sorry, Councilor. Your abstention will be noted. Councilor uh, Ar Council Arringer. Yes. And Councilor Pauline Cormier. Yay. And Councilor David Cormier. Yay. By a vote of 8 to 0, 37 20 is given further time, and a public hearing is established for May 26th at 6 30 p.m. Moving on to 38 20, uh, Councilor uh, Chairman of Legal Affairs, Councilor Dabrowski, I'm going to waive. The reading um, and just explain to the public that this has been on our agenda for several occasions. Um, I believe you're going to be looking for further time, so it will be read again. But the essence of it is, is that we are making certain technical uh, changes to the our ordinance governing floodplains to be consistent with federal and state uh, regulations. That's correct, Mr. Council President, and that's correct. And we're just. Um, we're still awaiting a couple of referrals, uh, probably not as concerned about the zoning board's referral, but uh, certainly we need the planning board's referral. Very well. So the recommendation is further time? Correct. I'll check with you. That is your committee, Council Shalfo Zephyr. I agree with that. And Councilor David Cormier? I also agree. You've heard the EMS recommendation of the Legal Affairs Committee to grant 38-20 further time. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, this will be by roll call. Councilor Frieda? Yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Shalafo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Ardinger? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. I shall be reported as Jay. Petition 38 20 is granted further time by a vote of 9 to 0. Moving on to 53 20. Thank you, Mr. President. 50, petition 53 20. Jill A. Natola. Petition for acceptance of Sheldon Hill Drive and Pheasant Run Circle. Um, the DPW has issued a letter indicating that they're in favor of this. Uh, unfortunately, we are still waiting for a referral from the planning board. Uh, perhaps the clerk can find out when their next meeting and if they plan on giving us a referral for our first meeting in May. Um, but our hands are tied. I, I'd ask for further time. Very well. I'll check the members of the committee. Uh, Councilor Susan, Susan Shalfo Zephyr. I agree with that. And Councilor David Cormier. I also agree, but I just, if I may, can I ask the city clerk? Um, we we didn't receive anything back from the planning board. Haven't they met since the last time we met, Madam Clerk? Um, I spoke to Ms. Wood regarding these things being held up, and I asked an estimate of when we would be getting them back, and she said due to the circumstances, the board has um, decided not to speak about a lot of this because of the lack of meeting in person and that it's delayed. But I can re uh, reach out to her to see if they plan on doing anything sooner. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you, could you please um, echo to Ms. Wood and the uh, planning board through her that uh, we expect the city business to be conducted? Um, okay just like all the other departments in the city are conducting themselves. And if there's a problem with that, would somebody get to me personally to discuss it? Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, you've heard the name's recommendation of legal affairs to grant 53-20 further time. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Frieda? Yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. 
Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Artinger? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. And I shall be recorded as yay by a vote of 9 to 0. 53 dash 20 is given for the time. Moving on to 55 dash 20. Thank you, Mr. President. Petition 55 dash 20. Officer Julio Ramos requests to amend Chapter 13 of the revised ordinances entitled Motor Vehicles and Traffic. Be it ordained by the City Council and the City of Leominster as follows Chapter 13, Section 13 34 of the revised ordinances entitled No Parking on Certain Streets is hereby amended by inserting the following text No parking on Research Drive, both sides, from a point beginning 1,163 feet easterly from the intersection with Central Street around the cul de sac and back <coughs> westerly to the 1,163-foot starting point. Um, we had a public hearing earlier uh, this evening. Uh, it was noted that the um, police chief and the traffic agent from the police department are both in favor of this. Uh, we did amend it, so my recommendation is to grant Petition 55-20 as amended. I'd ask you to okay. pull my committee. I will. Um, Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Yes, I agree with that. Councilor Dave. I also agree. Uh, very well. You've heard the unanimous recommendation of the Legal Affairs Committee to grant 55-20 as amended. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, this will be by roll call. Councilor Frieda? Yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Artinger? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. And I shall be recorded as yay by a vote of 9 to 0. 55 20 is granted as amended. Moving on to city property. Councilor Angelini, do you want to read the um, communication? Certainly. A59, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests that the council adopt an order to authorize the mayor on behalf of the city to accept an easement from the owners of the property described below. A copy of the easement granted by the owners of the property is attached. Uh, Mr. President, uh, this is a cooperative agreement uh, that was struck between the city and the property owners. It establishes a trailhead for the real trail um, and parking. Um, uh, the lease <clears throat> for cost of one dollar, and uh, the property will remain on the tax rolls. Uh, I might add that this agreement was masterfully negotiated by our distinguished city council president. And uh, I would recommend that we adopt C-59. And I would ask you to poll the members of my committee, Mr. President. Very well. Councilor Dombrowski? I'm in agreement. And Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Um, Mr. President, I'm going to recuse myself from C-59. Um, anything related to the rail trail, um, as I have a conflict um, with with that project. Yeah, very well. Your abstention is noted. Um, as a result, uh, there is a unanimous recommendation of City Property Committee to grant C-59. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, this will be by roll call. Councilor Frieda? Yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Artinger? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. 
I shall be recorded as yay by a vote of 8 to 0. C-59 is passed. We have nothing under new business. Okay. Have, Excuse me, Mr. President. No yes. Um, if that, le that city property piece for the easement is under a lease, we will have to have a public hearing for it because it wasn't just a gift. Oh, okay. So we need to establish a public hearing? I didn't hear the end of what the clerk said. Could she repeat that, please, Mr. President? Yeah, we, we need to establish a public hearing because it's a uh, gift. It's not a gift. I it's a lease. Thank you. But what's that? Because it's a lease, we have to yeah. do it. If it was a gift, we would not have to. But since there's money involved, even if it's a dollar, a public hearing has to be held. Who will find that? It's just my law. That, that's, that's a gift, right. a dollar. But uh, I guess we can't. Hurt, it can't hurt having a public hearing. So, um, it, well, you, you know what? Let's. I, I I take the position that this is a gift. Could we check that with Copeman and Page? And maybe what we could do, um, if there's no objection from anyone, is we could establish a public hearing just in case. Um, and if um, if we need to if we need to have the public hearing, we'll have it. If not, we'll cancel it. That makes sense I was to actually everybody? Um, speaking with Lee from Copelman and Page recently yep. about it, and we were both under the impression the public hearing would need to be held. But I can definitely reconfirm that. All right. Well, that that even more. Public hearing. So we will. Uh, do you have a proposed public hearing date and time, uh, Madam Clerk? Yeah, well, I'll try that again. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have a proposed public hearing date and time for C-59? recommendation of city property is to establish a public hearing on May 11th at 6.52 p.m. Uh, is there any further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Hearing President? On... Yes. Just briefly, may I uh, remind the chairman of finance to make sure he deducts that dollar from the next financial report? I wouldn't want anyone to think that we were being reckless to the city's funds. I'm sure that I the won't. chairman of finance will note that. I Thank you, Mr. President. Call her about that. Thank you. We'll we'll, uh, we'll remind him with one of those uh, chimes from his cuckoo clock. Um, okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Council Frieda. Yay. Council Dombrowski. Yay. Councilor Beckley. Yay. Councilor Angel Angelini. Yay. Council Oranger. Council Ardinger? Yay. Council Pauline Cormier? Yay. Council David Cormier? Yay. I shall be recorded as yay. The public hearing on C-59 is established at 5 on May 11th at 6.52 p.m. by a vote of 8 to 0. We have nothing under new business. We have nothing under old business. Do we have anything under the community calendar? Mr. President? Yes. Dean Mazzarella here. Good evening. Could I, could I say a few words? Is it relative to something on our agenda, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> or do you want to update us with regard to generally yeah. what's going on in the community? Yeah, I know it's probably not on the agenda, but if, if you'd like, I would just give a quick update. I'm totally up to you. 
want to sure, sure but go yeah. ahead that we could construe that to be a, a community calendar piece i think uh, legitimately okay so um unfortunately this is not what we thought we'd be doing you know uh, as we approach may and it's i'm sure not anybody's plan or where we thought we'd be but overall um just thank you for your support everyone's been fabulous at the council city clerk's office everyone i can't say enough the all city departments and public safety and board of health and everyone's just pulled together and it's really gone smoothly fingers crossed um there are issues things the longer it goes on the more complex things get and and that's okay because you know we we seem to work through those things but um we we you know i'm gonna check on the um why the planning board is send it down recommendations number one because all departments and boards and commissions were instructed to keep c continue moving with city business although in a different manner the same way as you're conducting business but um so all departments really have been we've been fortunate we've adapted and um we do whatever we have to do to accommodate those that you know need city government and we're in the process now of um and caitlin's been helpful on this and other departments of um building sort of these plexiglass customer service areas where uh, the, the public will be protected and we will as well and doing the necessary things to get us ready so when we do open we're not sort of hurrying to to re react to the open we don't know when that opening is going to be but we will certainly be ready when when that day comes and hopefully it's soon and hopefully it's safe and uh, so we'll respond in that manner but we, we are keeping city government open and and things are going as i said well and caitlin's doing weddings wherever but um it, it's everything there's nothing that we haven't done in all projects wendy is continuing her grant um everything is moving forward all projects and um you know not on our end if there's if any of them are slowed down at all it, it hasn't been on our end we keep pushing on all ends and we're also at the same time that we've been sort of working through this you know COVID 19 we're in the planning stages of what does it look like when we come out of it and you know we suspect it'll be a slow approach baby steps and sort of little bigger steps and and then probably larger ones as we go on so what does that look like and how do we accommodate those businesses and so we're constantly in touch with businesses trying to get the information out so that um people in the community can access whatever um help they need and assistance in terms of you know whether it be the federal or the state and we help people fill out forms and help businesses to understand where and what parts of funding they may be they may um that they may qualify for either grants or funding and so we're trying real hard what we you know again what we suspect and we're planning for is a very you know gradual baby steps approach out um, we're really, and if anybody there has conversations with small business restaurants, we're really pushing the idea of outdoor dining, sending out restaurants. Uh, we're coming up with a, from the health department, a gold star standard, which uh, all food businesses need to, you know, uh, to, to, to pass rigorous food inspections. But this would be above and beyond. So that um, for certain sanitary, so so they may give out masks, they may have hand sanitizer circulated, they may thin out their tables. So there'll be certain standards that are above and beyond the most rigid requirements in the food standard industry. So we're working on those kinds of things. The end of June, we'd like to do a old-fashioned bargain day sort of uh, sidewalk sale thing for for people in town that would bring smaller groups and that would be spread out through the city and we put out a map and then um you know we those are the sorts of things that we're um approaching that sort of um small groups we think that people will still be sensitive and remember the virus won't go away overnight so it's, it's gonna you know it's gonna be sort of people poking out at what they feel comfortable with but our trails are getting maximum use in our parks and uh, you know we've tried to keep most manufacturers have gotten some sort of a, um, a waiver, either from the federal government or the state, and a number of them have retrofitted themselves to, to produce uh, COVID-19 supplies and materials. 
And so all in all, um, it's, it's, I, I, fingers crossed, but I think a lot of it, it's just to tap ourselves on the back for a minute. A lot of this work, even though we didn't know a pandemic was coming, we sort of knew something would happen at some point. It's all the planning through the years, council support for buying equipment, the emergency management center, all of these things cumulative have really put us in that spot when we rolled out the plan for the epidemic and the pandemic. We were like, we're, we're 90% of the way there. So just want to thank you for your help and support of the taxpayers and uh, we're, we're good and if you run into problems uh, in any case if there are people out there that have need uh, Ginny's Food Kitchen you know we've been working with them we're, and, and there are other agencies we're all helping each other out so if there are people who are in need um, by all means get a hold of us and you know we'll, we'll, we'll do as much as we possibly can and, and we can do it with in several languages if people have a language barrier and we wanted to access the city government. So all in all, a big thank you to every one of you for your support. I know that some, you know, I've tried to stay in touch with the council president. I know you've all maybe felt like you didn't want to bother me or us. So you've been supportive in the background, thinking that we're all busy all the time, and we are. But just thank you. I know you're out there. We know you're out there, and I just want to thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. President? Yes, Councilor Angelini. Um, I, I think it's important, if, if I may, um, I, I just want to sh give a shout out and a hat tip to the mayor and his staff. They've been absolutely unbelievable. Um, any constituent issues I've had, they respond immediately. They exude confidence, and I think that sets the tone for the rest of the community. Uh, it's really it's it's really uh, remarkable the job they've done in light of the challenges that we've faced the past couple of months, and I think it's important that the community understands that. And uh, we are really fortunate to have the professional staff in the mayor's office uh, through these. <laughs> these just for, it's just for the public. A <laughs> just, just for the public edification. That's uh, right. Councilor David Cormier's cuckoo clock, famous cuckoo clock, uh, from his, live from his kitchen. He doesn't mean any any uh, ill will or any disparagement by it. It's just a, a nice timepiece. <laughs> Thank you for years from now. Thirty years from now, people will be listening to this and they'll say, "What was going on in city government <laughs> in the middle of the pandemic?" <laughs> We're all cuckoo. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Well, th yeah. thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm sure, sure we all echo our, our thanks for your leadership. And thank you to all of the city councilors for um, doing a great job uh, with this difficult process and these difficult times. I truly appreciate your support. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The program is sponsored by Medical Arts Hearing Instruments, 52 West Street in Lemonster, locally and authentically providing better hearing and quality of life since 1978. www.donotshout.com.